Expendables is a big, underwhelming mess. The problem falls under the amateur directing. You can just see how inexperienced this director is. The film sets you up to fall asleep. At one point, I generally thought Sylvester Stallone was gonna fall asleep and even Kelsey Grammer couldn't wake me up. The film is trying way too hard not to be an Expendables movie. It just didn't make any sense to me. You've got this sort of 80s throwback, we must get everybody in this film and then we're not going to be like an Expendables movie, but try and steer away from that. Personally, I just feel like if you're getting all these people from decades ago in this film, you can't play it serious. It is funny. It's too funny to watch watching these guys parade around thinking they're action stars still, it, it just doesn't work. So to me it should be done tongue-in-cheek, funny, not serious, and it is too serious, it just doesn't work. It's all too doom and gloom when <sighs> you should just have a laugh with it. So it took Antonio Banderas, the silly charismatic Spanish Antonio Banderas, to pull me out of my coma and just lift me up out of my chair a little bit because he was the only one that wasn't taking himself seriously. He was willing to play it stupid, he was willing to be silly, and his character, yeah, probably is annoying to most people, but I fell in love with him. Bring back Zorro! So then you've got these like younger people that they've put in, you've got MMA fighters, boxers, you've got a budget Chris Evans in there, and you've got Kellen Lutz, and they're all weak, they're all quite bad, and in the film they're practically non-existent. It's like they introduce, introduce them all, they set up this about 20 minutes time to bring in all these characters, and then they were like, oh, we don't actually care about the young ones, let's just not bother showing them. So you've got all these fighters, you've got real MMA boxers, you've got all the 80s action stars in there, and then you edit out all the fighting to bring it to a 12A. So this obsession with making it a 12A rating just oh, made the film just even more unenjoyable. The editing was atrocious. It was like someone would be running at someone with a knife and be like, ah! cut away. And then we're assuming that they got them with the knife. I'm guessing. Maybe they didn't. Maybe they stopped and had a chat and a coffee. You know, who knows. And also, just for the record, BBFC, just because you can't see blood doesn't mean it's not violent. I was appalled. <laughs> I sound like this really awful complainer there. I was absolutely appalled by this. I must write in and complain immediately. <laughs> it's like Mel Gibson was just shooting all these people point blank. Like, poof, 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 poof but apparently that's fine for children to see that, but seeing a bit of blood, oh no, God forbid. Was Mel Gibson enough to lighten the mood and bring it back to something good? Not really, no, because he spent the entire time trying to emulate the Joker. It was very bizarre and rather awkward. And let's not forget, Arnie's screen time of about 10 minutes throughout the entire film was hired just to scream sentences that involved the word chopper. 